So here's a quick overview of Auto Patter and uh, and Patter Storage. I got this original patch from uh, a website um, a forum uh, done by Super Twang, and uh, he asked this question, and he ends up getting an answer and uh, and a cleaned up version by Chris Mueller. And uh, here he's he has a B patcher and what he's done is he's pretty much just made a copy of it and pasted it down and he wanted to be able to save settings if we go into the B patcher we can see that this is a very simple setup and he's created an auto patter object and uh, created his object put it into a presentation mode and that's what we see here uh, what you don't see though is that he in the inspector is naming his um, his uh, object his name object under the name of flownum so when he is looking at a uh, patter storage and I'm going to turn at greedy off right now when we look at it he has this simple test control and he has that flow num that's the 22 and then we also have a 32 so I wanted to use this uh, capability to use on my patch my B patchers and uh, have it so that it can store multiple objects and uh, as well as um, uh, objects within the, the uh, B patcher. Uh, so to start off, I, I went into my simple patcher here, uh, my simple node out template, and I'll get out of presentation mode and go into edit mode. And what I've done is I've opened up the inspector for each one of the things that I want attributes for. So I'll go back into my presentation just so I can click and see. And here I've taken my control disable enable and in the um, bottom here I have a scripting name and a main on off as well as uh, for every other part that I, I do want to be able to um, save later on so here I have octaves on and off and that goes for everything so I'll get out of presentation mode what I've added here is a patter storage and an auto patter the patter storage is the general object and then I've named it simple node out I named it pretty much after the, uh, the B patcher name so when I go into that, um, a normal patter storage will be blank, and that happens mainly because uh, an auto patter isn't there, and so you have uh, no client objects. But if you add the auto, uh, the auto populate pretty much, um, it'll put in all of those things. And here we see the main on off, and we see the uh, the octaves on off. So all of these I've given script names. And because I've done this, I can then um, access them from higher levels. So if I go into patter storage, then uh, here we see the uh, simple note out template. So it's recognizing the actual B patcher. However, it's not recognizing the populations within that B patcher. So in order to do that, that's where that greedy part comes in. And so I add at greedy, and right now it's turned off. I just want to make sure that that's turned on. When I do that, then we can see that everything within that simple node out template is available to um, be saved as uh, as a preset. Now, say I go into a more complicated one where I'm actually using um, sub patches within, and so for example, I have my uh, pattern storage and I've named it robust note control uh, without the template, and I'm also including greedy one because I have. Uh, another patter storage within one of my sub patches. So if I go into uh, sub patch join notes, here I wanted to save all of these. Here, if we go into the inspector, I can see that this is uh, joy n, that's uh, for north. So I have north, northeast, east, uh, southeast, and south, and that continues on. So I've taken all of those and I've named them so that they're all available within the client objects of the patter storage of join notes. And then if I wanted to look at them within the robust note control, then that's where that greedy part comes in, and I see join notes and all of its um, locations. So that's how it stacks. And then if I bring it into here, then the same sort of uh, thing applies. I bring in the B patcher. Um, if you don't remember, then it's B patcher uh, with an at name, and uh, what was it called? It was uh, robust note control template. And uh, so there it's added. I'll go ahead and delete that. And because of the greedy one, I can go into here and uh, see robust note control template. And 
Within there, I see all of the populations as well as the subpopulations of joy notes. Um, now, say if I want to create multiple copies of this, I want to have presets for this one be unique from this copy. And that's um, another great thing about powder storage is it creates this uh, array where here I have the second one that's been created and uh, it puts it as one if I were to make more. Um, for example, if I just do that and I go back in, then here we see uh, here's the, the second one or uh, the, the third one that was made. And then when I do that, then I can store all of these um, and it stores it into a file called macintosh.json and I'll, I'll delete this for now. I'll move it to the trash and you'll see that it gets created when I hit the uh, save button. And so it's been stored on two and I'll move this to the side and move this over here and everything will be disabled on two for now and I'll store that and then I'll go to control enabled, enabled, enabled and I'll store that as one. Um, so now when I'm reading all the information then I can be flipping between two and one and uh, now if I go into say uh, this one will be all the way, this will be uh, halfway and this one will be just uh, a little bit. So I'll store this as one and then let's invert this, let's turn this off, let's increase that and let's increase this one all the way. And uh, what did I store that previous one as? Stored as two. So hopefully I remembered. Yeah, okay. So now each one is being saved individually. And if we go into that actual file that's being saved out and being uh, read, let's open it with Max, we see all the, uh, the line data from that. And so here we have the first slot, uh, or actually the second slot, which was two, and that was the one that was saved first. And then, um, uh, I guess it's not, I'm not sure where it's saving everything. Let's see. And let's put this one over here and we'll save that. Let's open that up again. Okay, so now here we have the slot data for uh, slot one as well as for slot two. Um, and that's, that's the idea of it. Uh, that's pretty much everything. Um, a little bit more detail is uh, when it is getting created, it's saying this patcher, it's finding out what the, um, the, uh, the location is for it. It's saving it under control test underscore settings and loading it up into these message boxes. Um, for the save, it's saying uh, store it first into here. Um, and also uh, this is where it's being written uh, or like IE saved and then for the load it's doing just you just follow that so i hope that's helpful and i will talk to you later but